Thank you. Okay, and again, I'm Larry Simmers. Um, sort of my lens in this whole thing is I'm the treatment plant supervisor. I've been with Unis Sanitary District for about 12 years. Um, and again, those of you that um, sort of my, my lens on this whole project is that um, many years ago I spent some time in manufacturing as a supervisor and a manager. And um, one of the things that I noticed, particularly in this industry, that um, sort of overlapped from what I saw in, in my previous job where a, a lot of the supervisors were actually promoted based on their technical skills. And, um, and w what I've seen in the past is the fact that um, this organization that I work for was really in a really strong growth pattern and their, as far as I'm concerned, their HR department got it in that, you know, if we're going to promote these people into supervision, we, they need to understand some uh, supervisory skills. So in, initially, or at the beginning of my career, um, I spent an awful lot of time in, in a classroom learning supervisory skills. And then I also had uh, my manager um, telling me that uh, within that organization, I moved into several positions and ended up being promoted as a um, QA manager. And through, through that transition, there were several points of time when somebody said, well, if you want to be promoted, you need to know how to do this. So, you know, again, I, um, over many years, was working on different coursework based on um, the recommendations from this, uh, whoever my boss was at that point in time. So that's sort of where I came into it. And one of the things that, that I've seen in this industry is uh, because of the way the Clean Water Act came in, specifically in wastewater, was that there was a huge influx of people in the uh, late 70s and then in the 80s. Uh, all of the technical stuff came in and we sort of downsized and with, it, with that downsizing, the people that already existed were, you know, went through the school of hard knocks so they knew how to supervise. Okay, so n now where are we at now? Um, the, the reality is we're, we've got um, really smart young people that are very technical savvy but, um, and they're ready for promotions as all these people are getting ready to, can you move to the next slide for me? So, you know, again, we, we're, we're in this transition period. So uh, just to kind of give a little background on Union Sanitary District, um, we do wastewater, and that's all we do. We do um, the collection system. We also do um, the wastewater treatment plant. So we've got about uh, 130 people at the treatment plant. We do about uh, 25 MGD. And we've won a couple of awards, specifically the CWA's uh, Plan of the Year and Collection System of the Year Award for large plants in uh, 2009. So it, it's been an evolution with this organization where we've constantly tried to improve and, and innovate. So the, this uh, great idea that I had that I wanted for just my department, <laughs> upper manager said, yeah, it's a great idea, let's do it everywhere. <laughs> um, so if you, um, and, and the reason for that thought process, ha this is, fits right in with our strategic plan. And, um, and of course, being a somewhat savvy person as I take myself for, that when I see something like, okay, we're gonna, we want to make sure our employees continue to develop, it's like, yeah, this program would be something that falls under that category. So, you know, again, it's, it's about um, within the organization building uh, stakeholder support and that, that was really key to be able to move forward with it. Um, I guess for, for, for the most part, it's really related just directly to one key point, and that's keeping a competitive workforce. And that's sort of the, the bottom line of this goal for the organization. So next, please. All right. This is kind of my original pitch that I made in uh, November of uh, 2009 and it was um, specifically had to do with my personal concerns about my department and um, I spent an awful lot of years developing training programs and training people within my particular segment as we call it our team and uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, it stuck around for a while because I'm not sure how much longer I'll be around for 
I have, I have some really lofty goals. Um, so, you know, the, the short term thing is sort of what I had uh, touched on a little bit earlier the fact that um, these management skills just don't exist with these people that have the high technical skills. Um, and, and then, because of this baby boomer and the, the lack of supervisory skills within the industry, you know, it, it's really important that we don't lose the institutional knowledge when we start retiring. And we've, we've done a lot of uh, long term staffing things. Uh, at, at uh, just a little segment sample of it, we had one of our uh, lead electricians was had been with the district for a very long time, and he told us ahead of time that he was going to be retiring. So one of the initiatives the district took on was to actually hire somebody in advance. So to actually take the time and transfer the knowledge. So that's kind of a, a really good example of how USD wants to, you know, get on the starting end of this instead of waiting until it happened. And then my personal interest was the fact that my cohort was retired in December, and I'm hoping to go sometime soon after that. And, and I wanted to be able to um, keep things going at USD. So again, that was sort of my, my personal in interest for it. And then I had, um, had contact with a very specific program down in Orange County that uh, Rancho Santiago Community College has, and they actually have a water utilities supervisor program. So my first thought was when I originally pitched this is, hey, we need something like this in the Bay Area. Um, how can I make this happen? So, you know, again, I a um, little further, we'll, we'll talk about that. But that was sort of the goal to um, to go through that, and um, again, because I'm somewhat low-tech, although I can actually use a computer. I made a couple of little handouts that kind of talk about some of the available resources that, um, that are available to us in the, in the Bay Area and, and, and sort of give a little bit of a um, tune on where I, where the direction I wanted to go with this. So, it, you know, again, it's, it's really important that you've got, you know, a buy-in from stakeholders. Again, it, it's not Larry Sanitation District, it's Union Sanitary District, and we report to a board, and we have customers, so we have to uh, be responsible for our resources. So if you can go to the next slide. So um, again, I spent some preliminary time looking at what kind of resources were available, and this bottom list um, on this handout that I gave you sort of shows some of the different types of um, things that are available to us. Um, and, you know, again, some of them are expensive and some of them are not, um, are sh short-term training. So I was looking for something a little more comprehensive. I wanted to be able to um, do something where we had um, a public administration lens on this. You know, again, the local community college has um, business courses and they have supervisory courses, but they don't, you know, it's about bottom line, and the reality of our work is it's not bottom line, it's about providing a service and, you know, and being responsible for our um, agency at the same point in time. So, you know, we, we were doing a little bit of a balancing act. So it, it is, you know, a, a different lens. And then in addition to that, um, in, in part of this process of getting buy-in and, and not wanting to be in total tunnel vision. It, it was really important to get feedback from um, our executive team and from our existing coaches, or, which are our first line supervisors. So we held focus group meetings. And basically what we did is we um, had conversations with the coaches and, find, to find, and created this list of, you know, what, what are your recommendations for being a skillful coach? And then, you know, taking it up one level, the executive team <clears throat> what are your expectations from a coach or supervisor? So, and, and that's sort of how this melded around these, um, some of our other alternatives. And, and then again, um, budgeting is, is, is a really important part of it. Um, you know, we only have so many dollars and we have to make sure that we're using it correctly. So I'll talk a little bit more about how much, what kind of costs we were talking about. And then, um, with the, an overall comprehensive program, it's going to require some, some kind of mentoring, and we needed mentoring training. 
I mean, th the reality is we're kind of a small organization. Our uh, managers do a fine job, but th they have never been trained in mentoring. So that was one of, one of our focuses. I'll talk a little more about. So if you go next one. So again, this, the program was generated with this um, three main components. And the, the first component was we decided on um, a online supervisory management program that's at Ohlone College, and then um, attending in-house um, courses where we could transfer USD institutional knowledge to people. Because the, the, to me, that's the piece that's missing from um, the community college program. And then to be able to get um, another one of my selfish goals is to not only improve our supervisory group, but at the same point in time to if I can help improve our uh, executive fee management, I'm always willing to go that direction. So, you know, if we can teach them how to be mentors and mentor the program, I not only get buy-in from them because they're committed to it, but then I also, the district ends up with better managers. And, and so, you know, really it's a, a, a really good thing for the district to take that as another piece. So, so the Ohlone courses. And again, this, um, the Ohlone coursework, I have um, a training program that we have for operations. And part of that operational training program um, got to a point where some of the initial people in the training program had already achieved the goals of the journey level operator. So then with the way we set up our evaluations and the way I try to manage people is that, uh, you know, what is your next goal going to be? What do you want to do? And we had uh, several um, of our lead newer operators that were really interested in supervision. So I had actually had them um, recommend to them to enroll in this Ohlone program prior to even starting this whole program. So I had three people that actually had gone through uh, a semester and a half before we actually started this thing as an organizational thing. Um, so as part of our program, um, I, the courses that I felt that were important, I didn't want to actually require them to take um, the whole program. Uh, the reality is they're working adults. Um, I've been a working adult, adult and it took me 30 years to get my bachelor's degree. So I know how difficult that can be. So um, again, my whole focus in this thing was trying to make it easy for them. So we selected what we thought were the three most important courses and then left them with an alternative. So that way we could sort of branch over a, a 18 to 24 month time frame. And then so that they need to complete one extra course. So I also have some little handouts that actually shows their uh, certificate or associate degree program. and. Um, you know, again, we have these expectations that if you're in the program that you're going to um, at least get a final grade of a C and you're going to do the coursework on your own time. So we are not um, paying for their time to go to this, take these college courses. And again, to me, this is part of, you know, people showing a commitment for us, you know, going the extra distance with them. You know, again, they've got to be, you know, part of this give and take. And if they've made a commitment to do coursework like this as part of their regular, while they're doing their full-time job, then you know they, they've definitely shown us that that it's well worth it for us to spend the extra time and all the other things we're going to do with them. So the district, prior to any of this happening, has always invested in education. So this program falls right in with our educational reimbursement program. So you know again, it's a matter of completing the coursework, submitting all of our documentation for it that they've completed the class of uh, C and higher, and then um, they get reimbursed on for their uh, tuition and their books. So the, the Ohlone class itself, you know, I touched on this thing about my concern about, you know, working adults. And um, in, in my 30-year college history, uh, um, yeah, maybe just funny to me, but <laughs> it was it, it it's 
it was a struggle. Anyways, um, it, it's very important that they have some kind of flexibility in it. And um, you know, throughout that time frame, I, I, I had personally had done like an online biology class, and I was really disappointed in it because the whole reason I was taking the class is because I wanted to learn about biology. You know, it was a requirement, but I wanted to learn something. And to me, it was just they were teaching you how to take a test. You weren't really learning anything. So I really wasn't happy with it. But when I, so I spent the time and actually dug into their actual program. And, you know, it's been a few years. And the way they've got their system set up, I think that is much more accountable. They actually have, instructors have accountability on how much time the individual students have been on the web. They can give me reports on, on uh, their web time. They also require them to do uh, blog discussions and then written assignments in addition to um, uh, reading for that particular thing. So I've got, this kind of a, is a, a copy of one of the syllabuses for the uh, supervisory course. Kind of give you an idea of, of how they run that program. And um, let's go ahead and go to the next one. So. Once they're involved in this um, college program, one of the key components is this fact of being able to integrate the supervisory coursework with the institutional knowledge. So one of the things that this um, task force that we've, we have set up, mm -hmm. and one of the goals is to work really closely with the, um, the college, and they actually, they give us um, their lesson plan and <clears throat> basically the syllabus all ahead of time. And then we've got copies of the textbooks. So we're actually taking our in-house training and trying to deliver it at the same point in time that they're taking these, uh, cor the coursework. So um, the next module they're going to be doing um, in the next semester is uh, human resources. So we'll do all the human resources segments of our in-house training during that uh, semester. So the idea is to kind of tie how, how, they, how they fit together. Um, right now, um, th the major requirements for this in-house training to kind of get that to happen is ha it needs to be concurrent. So they've got to be taking the classes at the same time. We're, we've got have uh, 14 modules that are set up that are identified. I'll show you the list in, in a minute. And then. Um, we're targeted to do that between a 12 and 18 month time frame within this 24 month window of when we're going to, what we're calling the completion of the program. Um, and, and again, our in-house courses are trying to focus in on that lens of public administration. You know, that's the part that's going to be missing out of this business course. So um, there's, you know, very specific things that have, have to do with regulations that, that we'll work on, specifically um, uh, the way we handle accounting is very different than the, the private sector. And then um, another important part of this is that, you know, they, they, if we're going to take this time to train them, they need to be in, invested in the program. So again, one of the things we're going to be looking at is to make sure that they're uh, participating in the classwork, that we've got written assignments that they need to do. And um, we're looking at them. We're not giving them letter grades. But, you know, the reality of this is, they're responsible for their performance and making sure that they're um, on time. So next is, this is our list of um, internal courses that we've created. Um, we have completed three of the courses. We did transition to supervision, uh, leadership, and we also did uh, team development. And in August, we're going to be doing um, the safety section, which is safety and workers' compensation. So on this overall list, again, we're sh sort of shifting around based on uh, uh, Ohlone College's um, schedule for their, their coursework. So then we've got communications, and communications is also uh, verbal and written. So we'll actually be doing um, our head of HR is an English professor. So she'll be <laughs> we'll be doing a writing class for them for sure. And, um, and again, employee relations, I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, the importance of this segment of it is that, you know, this is going to be um, 
really potential, high potential of cost savings. If we can teach people in, in these leadership roles to you know, understand human relations, it's going to uh, save the district in the long run because they understand you know, what the process is instead of making mistakes and we end up having to pay extra money for grievances or going through arbitration or some other costly thing. The reality is um, we're not perfect and we've had our instances where um, it's cost us and we could have done a better job. So, you know, again, that's, this is what we're trying to accomplish and I'll talk a little bit more about that. So budgeting procurement, customer satisfaction, um, time management and organization, facilitation, problem solving, and uh, change management. So those are, those are the topics that we're going to be covering. Um, the next segment is on our mentoring program. So um, again, Larry's alternative motive in this thing is to help develop the management staff and not let them know we're making them smarter too. So, so all of our executive team are going to be mentors in this program, and they are mentors. So, um, you know, with that, there, there were, um, you know, some, there was some an anticipation specifically from some of the executive pe team members of like, okay, I'm a mentor, what do I do? So, uh, again, the district, uh, I'm not an expert on mentoring, so we hired a consultant and the executive team went through a, um, a two-day training class and then we've done a couple of feedback sessions and then they are working as a group because um, at their uh, monthly, not monthly, their Monday uh, executive meeting, they have a, a, an agenda item to talk about um, how their mentoring has been going. So again, it's something that they're all working on as a group and at the same point in time, um, we're going through that, that with the individual employees. So, you know, we're, we, basically what we're looking for is um, an orientation to supervision and then some b developing their uh, leadership skills and then introduction to this organizational system of USD. So it all focuses back in on that institutional knowledge at the district that we're concerned about um, maintaining. So, you know, with that, um, there were some things that needed to be, be developed. Specifically, we have, um, you, you know, this, this question of what is, what is mentoring? And um, so we created guidelines ahead of time, and that's basically what this is. And, you know, it's like, well, what, is, what are the expectations of the mentor and the mentee? So it's, these are a, a sampling of that document. You know, it's uh, foster and sustain uh, productive work relationship, maintain confidentiality, be accessible, uh, listen actively, ask questions, make observations. So um, act as a role model, motivate and support the mentee to, to achieve their goals. So that, that's a, a, um, a really important part of it and to make sure that we understand that that's clear. And um, we, we've, I have another one of my uh, low tech samples to let you see what actually what our, we've, we created a partnering agreement. So the idea is that both the mentor and the mentee, you know, understand what their relationship is and we want them to sign a partnering contract. And, and that's basically what this is. So, you know, again, it's really important for this to actually, you know, create some results is you know, we need to be invested in it. And that's sort of what this, this is document is stating ahead of time. So, go ahead. So this is uh, uh, the listing of, of, of the people that we, we have in our program. And the thing to me that's um, really important is the cross section of it. Again, you know, we're an organization of about 130 people. The participants, we've got principal engineer, associate engineer, planner scheduler, chemist, IT administrator, plant supervisor, storekeeper, and an accounting specialist. So that's kind of, that's a really nice cross-section of, of our treatment plant. And so we really expect some good things to help develop our organization. And then at the same point in time, that other thing in the back of my head, oh, it's helped the management team too. So the, the mentors, this, the general manager, it's the uh, collection services manager, 
It's the CIP manager, which is our capital improvements, our engineering department, administrative services, which handles all of our uh, administrative functions, and the treatment plant manager. So, you know, again, it's trying to get a complete cross-section of, of this um, organization to try and develop, you know, connections. Okay. So how, how did we come to that selection process? Again, um, our organization is, uh, tries to be as transparent as possible. So, you know, functionally we needed some way to create some selection criteria. We weren't just going to go out and say, hey, um, have the, one of the supervisors, hey, get the supervisors in a meeting and, hey, we want you to recommend somebody. You know, it's like, uh, n no, we want to be a little more specific than that. So, again, you know, we created a, a written application and, you know, we want to know why do you want to participate. And we gave them, you know, two page maximum and uh, demonstrate, how, how have you demonstrated your leadership skills? And then, you know, within this, these focus groups or the initial rollout meetings that we had, you know, we made sure that everybody that was interested in the program originally, that they knew they were going to be committed for 24 months, and that they provided a recommendation from a manager or a staff person. And, and then we wanted to make sure that this, the process was um, transparent. So the idea, again, we had selected a panel to um, select who was going to be part of this group. So we had one of our executive team members a supervisor, an HR rep, and a union rep in the selection committee. So in addition to that, there were some other requirements. We wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, there were some minimum requirements met with these candidates. So um, like one of the obvious things was, well, you have to be past probation. Um, and then, you know, again, because this is, we're looking at, at this as a, a leadership role, that whatever job function they have, they should be, you know, doing that job function at least at a journey level type position. So, and if they weren't doing it at USD, that they've done it somewhere else, so that we, we know that, you know, they're committed to, being, to, to moving forward. And, you know, again, there are opportunities because of the structure of Union Sanitary District that um, people can show their leadership skills. So, you know, again, th this is part of it. The selection is that, that, that they've demonstrated it. And, you know, again, another one of those obvious things is they better have satisfactory performance or there's not a chance. So <clears throat> that's sort of how we vetted some of, some of the uh, applications out. So thanks. So what we ended up with is uh, 13 applicants and then um, the panel reviewed those applications and made recommendations to the GM. And again, this is another one of those um, things in the back of Larry's head of, about getting stakeholder support and making sure that it goes all the way to the top. It's like GM gets to pick them. So, you know, again, he, we need to keep him involved in it. The number of employees, um, we had some things coming in where we thought, you know, somewhere in the, it's got to be a large enough group so that when we do the in-house training that we've got, you know, some sharing of information so they can help each other develop. They can talk about some of the different things in the coursework or they can talk about some of the different things on the in-house. So we get more out of that. And sort of what happened is that we, we had a limit that we only have um, five executive team members. So it can't be ten, more than ten. And then um, when we actually did the... Uh, um, the evaluation of the applicants, there was a, gr a group of eight that just kind of rose to the top. And there was a huge separation between them and the others. So we, that's why we decided with, with eight. And uh, again, it's, it's worked out really well for the size. You know, they've gotten, in our in-house stuff, they've done um, a lot of collaboration on, you know, what's gone in their classroom work and also what's gone on in, um, for the in, in in-house stuff. So the um, mentee development. Um, again, we, you know, we're making sure that as a task force, the the, the myself and um, Donna and Judy, 
that um, we're really focusing in on, on changing behaviors. You know, we, we want to be able to, you know, increase their behavior in this focus or lens of um, leadership. You know, so, you know, it's kind of, kind of the idea. So we want things that sort of, you know, mold around that area. Initially, there were thoughts of, well, what we'll do is we'll as assign them to a project, and then we'll make them be responsible for the project. And with the size of our organization, it really wasn't practical to have everybody do that. And, you know, and which for me being a, 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 a production and a plant guy, it's like, no, they need something to do. So, you know, you've got to have some kind of thing we can measure how much they controlled their, their resources. And um, fortunately, we have other people on our task force that know a lot about this kind of stuff. And basically, the other two people on the task force said, no, you can do it strictly on changing behavior. So uh, again, so what we ended up with is um, them, set, them setting goals similar to, um, let me read a couple of them off here, like improving uh, resource management, um, build, building support you know, within other groups, um, becoming a bit better organized, completing difficult conversations, become a better leader, improve public speaking, and understand revenue program. So that, that's just like a selection of um, just a, a few of the goals that they set with the mentors. And again, we're, we're doing check-ins with them. Um, we've done it in the first two months at their executive meeting. We've done a check-in with the executive team to find out how it's going. We've also have got set up individual meetings with, with uh, uh, the mentees to see how, how they're doing. So again, it, this is part of the, the follow-up on this to make sure that you know, we get to where we want to be with this and to be able to influence the, the leadership in the organization. Okay. So again, I, you know, I'm taking my lens of um, I'm the guy responsible for keeping the treatment plant running. And, um, and then when I sit in a room with other operational coaches and other operations managers, the first thing that comes to our mind is, you know, it's like, what are the resources for this? You know, who's, do we have time for all this stuff? So, you know, again, uh, up front, we need to make it known that the reality is if, if we get in, organizationally, we get into a situation where we um, have other priorities that you know, we're going to put this on the shelf and we're going to take care of that thing. You know, like a more specific example of it would, would be a situation where there's a, um, a plant problem and we need to reschedule the training. I mean, that's what, really what we're talking about. We're not talking about like shelf in the program, but it's, you know, more at a, at a lower level. And then, um, you know, again, management needs to be able to evaluate the cost and benefits. So, you know, we're, we're tracking what what kind of resources we're spending. And then again, we'll, we'll do a report out after we finish the, uh, the first series. So, and, and then, you know, again, it's one of those kind of things where, especially when you get into a situation where um, we don't really have any extra supervisor openings at this point in time. But, you know, we're trying to m move this ahead, so it needs to be up front that basically this is, doesn't mean you're going to get promoted. What this means is we're going to help you be a better person and be a better leader. And um, if by chance an opening does come up, you're going to be ready for it. You're going to be able to compete with others. And, and, and that's sort of the, my personal goal of this thing is that, you know, I know that people are going to be leaving. I know what happened eight years ago when we tried hiring plant operator threes and, well, if I go back 12 years or even further back, uh, USD sends out a, a job announcement for plant operator three, which is our journey level position, which is kind of our designated in charge for the shift that, um, you know, we'd have 10 or 12 people turn in applications. We'd have a really good selection. And then um, seven years ago, we had a couple of people retire and it's in our announcements, and we got one application, and we got another one that was late. 
And I'm looking at the applications, it's like, no, we don't want to hire these people. <laughs> so what, what are we going to do? So, you know, again, it's, this is, you know, something that I started several years ago with, within the operations department, is to be able to uh, train these individuals up to this journey level and get them to be responsible for the plant. And so I've got a whole bunch of them that are, that are there. Okay, so what's next? So the next step is, you know, hey, I want to be a supervisor. How do I do that? So that was kind of the, my personal moving in this direction. So next. So this is a listing of what we're estimating our cost to be. And it, it's um, going to be pretty darn accurate. You know, again, for the, the mentoring segment, we're, we're thinking about $1,400 for the um, per participant. And then the in-house training, um, it's going to be a little higher on this first series than it will be on um, the future. You know, again, because we are actually, that list that I showed you earlier of all the uh, in-house courses that we're doing, we're developing those courses, at, you know, like two months before we give them. You know, we know what, what we need to do and what we need to cover, but the reality is we don't have a lesson plan. And, um, and again, we're <laughs> we don't have somebody that does this job. You know, this, so again, I'm supervising a treatment plant, and then I'm going into a meeting with two other people, and we're coming up with a, um, a course that's going to explain our institutional knowledge at Union Sanitary District. So the initial part of this, you know, we've pretty much held to that. We've had um, each one of the segments that we've had, we've had three to four planning sessions, and finally come up with the, the final criteria for each, each of those courses, and then delivered them and it's gone very well so I think we're right on target with our estimate originally on that the uh, Ohlone colleges um, I guess I really didn't think about it but I guess that number could be changing with the community college prices going up <laughs> but right now we're still pretty close to actual costs um, and, and again that's really cheap I mean as far as I'm concerned 600 bucks to get uh, a supervisory course I mean that's that's really huge, and, and what they're getting out of it. You know, again, I've <clears throat> personally have, you know, gone through the, the textbook and find out what's in there. I personally have gone through their website and seen the kind of things that they're uh, discussing in their blog. I've also seen some of the um, <clears throat> not not necessarily a, a, a change in some of the employees, but uh, I. I they, they have a, a, a much improved um, understanding of uh, how it is or what it is to be a leader. So, you know, as far as the total cost over the two year time frame, we're talking probably about um, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, $37,000. And for us, we're, for some of the other initiatives that we've taken on, that's actually pretty cheap. That's correct. And, and then the other cost that's not there, which I think for many utilities is the more prohibitive cost, is the value of the staff time it takes to be a mentor that it takes to. Well, in, in this um, mentoring s segment, we've actually costed you that up. You've got that. So you feel like you've got in all of your, your labor costs in it so that the only thing that's missing is the consultant. Yes. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. Now, you know, again, there's some other, um, probably some hidden stuff in there, but uh, it's, um, we're like every other agency, even though we try not to think we are, we have our fires that we need to put out. And there are points in time when things happen, and we have to grab a big packet of resources and throw them at something. So, you know, again, there, there um, this is, um, because this is planned and staged, you know, over a time frame, we don't really have those those kind of um, emergency costs. And again, our part of our goal as a task force is is to keep track of that if there's some additional things. Okay, next. <clears throat> so, what we think we're going to get out of this thing? 
Okay, is we're going to have uh, expanded leadership capabilities. Um, in, any new supervisors that we have that, that we're going to expect they're going to be a lot more productive a lot sooner. And this third bullet there uh, is huge, the potential for that. And um, we've incurred a couple of instances where if somebody would have had better supervisory training, we wouldn't have incurred some costs. Um, again, you know, this smaller segment that's sort of related to that is, you know, the regulatory costs and uh, legal violations. Again, you know, th th these are the costs that we expect by training people to have uh, better leadership skills and understanding supervision that we're going to be able to reduce some of those costs. And then, in addition to that, if these people are are ready at that level when they come into a supervisory position that um, we're going to, um, they're going to have that training ahead of time. So they're, what extra resources that we spend on them are, are going to be more effective. So, you know, if you um, balance those two out, it's actually going to have <coughs> reduced cost. And then, um, there's this reoccurring thing that's, again, really important to Larry, is that um, I, I have, um, we have 15 operators at the treatment plant. I have seven of them that are grade five operators. So, <laughs> and, and, and then there's three behind them that are working their way up, you know, so I, what can I do to keep them motivated and keep them growing? So, you know, for, for me, personal, this bottom one is, if I've got this training program for them, you know, and I'm 24 months, boy, I got them hooked for another two years. And, you know, I, I definitely see that as a personal advantage. So, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So what, you know, again, as part of um, this, the executive team's buy-in on this program is that, you know, we want to be able to, to um, evaluate what we've accomplished from that. So we've set up some, <clears throat> what we consider some things that we can track and see, you know, because some of it's arbitrary. The reality is we're going to train eight people. Um, we don't know how many of them are going to become supervisors, so we don't really know exactly, you know, how that's going to be impacted. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, track their involvement in the program. We're going to uh, post training surveys interview the participants and the managers, and then ho hopefully in the future we'll find out how many of these uh, participants end up being promoted to management. Mary, did you have any observation as to one of the return on investment is reducing the workers' compensation? Um, at, you know, the, the reality is our XMOD has changed dramatically but it's from a combination of initiatives. This, no way could this program take credit for that. Yeah, we're below one now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it took some work. <laughs> um, yeah, we were way up there <laughs> at one point in time. So, you know, again, why don't you go ahead and go to the, the next slide. So, as far as progress so far, um, in, in the last year, basically in, in May, we started with um, the mentoring. We ended up, we've had uh, three courses so far that we've taught, and then we kind of took a little summer break, and then we're going to have our next course in uh, August. And then all of the participants have already completed their first semester. So, um, again, I think that it's gone very well for us and I think it's going to be uh, really something exciting for the for the district in the future and and one of the things that um, through some conversations that Cheryl and I had prior to um, starting these presentations one of the things that that we had talked about was this I keep coming back to this operator training program so and, and our problems that we had back in um, seven or eight years ago where we couldn't find any, any trainees one of the things that, that we did is we made a huge investment on creating training documents. And um, to be able to take these people that are um, 
basically I hire them and have them sign a contract that they're going to be a plant operator three in 24 months or I'm going to terminate them. So, you know, it, the first thing <laughs> that comes to my mind is like, well, how can I make sure I don't have to terminate them? Because that's going to really suck if I spend a bunch of time on training the, those individuals. So, uh, on a previous initiative, um, we documented basically, um, we have 14 modules that we've taken the plant and divided up into 14 segments and then and, and have created um, system descriptions. I don't know if any of you have gone to Jim McPherson's presentations, but um, basically we have what we call our JCR program and what it does is it document, documents the, um, the systems on how, how the treatment plant works and again, job competency requirements. And um, with that, it segmented such that we have a um, kind of like a glossary of um, what a, one would need to know about this particular uh, module at an elementary level. And it's basically like definitions and some elementary process. And then we have <clears throat> another segment of it that's called our uh, system section, which basically takes each one of the individual process areas and breaks it down into how it works. And then the third segment of this is we have um, what the daily tasks are for that particular uh, segment of that, or that module. So then, we've, then, then the final section is um, in this job competency requirements is abnormal conditions. So we try to identify abnormal conditions. And again, it, we're, we're trying to um, identify the problems that we've had in the past and what we did to correct those problems. So, you know, we've create, we created that document and then we took that document and created training courses where we've taken everybody in the treatment plant, including new people, and basically have run them through that whole segment. In addition to that, we have So I'll start from the beginning. The, the, the first one is just um, the, the basics is probably the best way to explain it. And, and really what it is is the nomenclature that we use and the elementary um, operation of that particular unit without getting any, any detail on what each module is. Um, again, we've, I'm not sure how informed you are of how a wastewater treatment plant works, but you know, we've got segments. So, and a lot of times they're divided by a building. So that building has got a module. And that's sort of how we do it. And so we, we've got the, uh, the elementary level. And the second level is actually uh, defines how the system works. So, you know, typically you'll see um, m more recently the engineering company that'll make the change, uh, whatever the process modification is, where they'll give you like a uh, process narrative. So basically what we've done is we've taken that process narrative, or what I did, <laughs> is taken the process narrative and some the big long trail of process changes that we've had and sort of put them all into one little category and then um, explain them individually. Is how does the thing work? And how does it normally work? And then the, um, the third segment is as, as I mentioned, was the um, just our regular, normal, everyday tasks in that building or that area, and then the abnormal tasks. And then um, the, the other segment of that is we have um, st specific standard, standard operating procedures for um, most of the tasks that we have. So again, it, you know, it's one, one, that's, this is the initiative that Union Sanitary just has been working on um, sort of the progression of it for the last seven or eight years. And, um, you know, it's one of those kind of things where um, I put my hand up and say, hey, can we start a training program? And then somebody says, yeah, that's a great idea. We'll look at hiring somebody. And then somebody from business services says, hey, we want somebody like that too. And then what ends up happening is we have a, 
a training coordinator that handles the whole district. So, you know, and, and again, what that's done is standardize our departments so that we're, you know, not in, in silos of creating these documents. So our collection services, our maintenance staff, and all, and the, all the operations groups have um, what we call our JCRs for it. Um, we, we were the first, one, first group that started because I had a bunch of stuff already done for our Operator 3 trainee program. So we just used the template and pasted it all in there. And then um, our collection services has really taken it on uh, full speed. And they've really done some amazing stuff. They've they actually created, um, if, if you haven't seen our facility, they, they, we have a, a, a training area where they can actually do backhoe training on site. And it, it's really cool. And um, and they've got a lot of stuff that's on videotape. They've even got some stuff on YouTube, how, how to do. And then um, our training coordinator is, is working with our maintenance staff now where they've, they've got one module fully developed and they're working on their third and fourth. So, you know, it's moving along. Um, the reality is it's, it's a huge investment um, and somebody has to take control of it. I, Personally, I'm a salaried employee and spend an awful lot of Saturdays trying to get this document documentation done. So you know, it, it was it was a lot of work, but you know, that's sort of my passion for this leadership thing. Is like, yeah, I did all these things to get these guys trained, and um, you know, my whole concept of it is, I, hey, I have no problem with being the training ground for all the treatment plant supervisors in California. I'm okay with that. And as long as I've got a template that I can keep punching out over and over again, uh, and and I, you know, finally got got to a situation where um, I actually um, converted one of my positions that I lost to this district training coordinator to a, an operations trainer, that um, we were able to get an awful lot done, and then we did it with some cheap resources. I basically hired two engineering students at different points in time and um, we, ha we have our subject matter experts that couldn't write to save themselves. So basically what I set them up with the engineering intern and they're used to writing papers so they would tell them how they did something and then we'd put it down and then we, they'd give it to me and we'd crunch it all together. So um, it, it worked out really well for us and this is kind of like the next stage to that. Any questions? Well, thank you. So, uh, I mean, you know, uh, quickly, just one question. Uh, how did the five people that didn't get uh, selected take it? I mean, are, are they or do they well, understand, or, uh, is there, or are they assuming that they'll catch it in 24 months and, and be the, the next? We didn't promise them anything, right. but we did make it a point that this is something we're going to continue to do, okay. and we want you to reapply. And the, you know, there, there's some logistical problems. We can't do 13 people. Right. It's right. we can't do it. So you know, and um, I, with those explanations, they they were okay with that. You know, and. and um, there were situations where we could have, or scenarios where we could have, in this selection group, taken people that were from one particular team and overloaded this group. And so we actually made some decisions that, you know, we, there's, you know, we said, you know, I said these eight came to the top, but the reality is it could have been 10. But those two other people were from the same department as two other people. So, you know, I didn't, we didn't want to do that, you know. And, and again, we couldn't. We didn't want to, um, especially, um, but honestly, we're, you know, we have this nice list of what we're going to do and what our outcomes should be, but the reality is we're creating the program as, as we work. We, we spend, uh, we usually go um, three or four meetings ahead of time to create the in-house program. 
and, and then end up presenting it um, a week later.